Hello, Little Mouse, Chapter 29, a miraculous ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Mira Rose. Artwork by Candy Fluffs on Instagram. You should go check her out. She does have her own store with miraculous ladybug stuff in it. Go give her a like, follow, all that good stuff. And if you haven't heard the previous 28 chapters, you can find links to those in the description box as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this to this video, to this channel, Ooh. Um, and leave a comment in the comment section for the YouTube algorithm. If you don't know what to comment, put Adrian's father. Please enjoy Hello Little Mouse, Chapter 29. Adrian aggressed as Cat Noir in his father's house. It wasn't often Cat Noir was in this house during an Akuma fight, despite his father's attempts to protect him. The ghost town became something desolate whenever an Akuma fluttered by, the few traces of life frozen as if it were an open house instead of a guarded cavern. And it was... unsettling. It was like how he remembered it in memories instead of the slow current of life it actually held. As silent as his namesake, Cat Noir slipped across the cool tile to his father's office. Without his phone, he wasn't sure when he'd be able to get another chance. Turning the knob, he pressed his ear to the door, listening for his father inside. Nothing. He must be with Natalie upstairs. Ever so slightly, then all at once, Cat pushed it open, running into the room with his baton out before sighing in relief that it was empty. Okay. Good. Truthfully, he wasn't ready to see his father again. Masked or not. Cat turned to the shelves, picking up a framed photo of him and his mom. This was it. This was what he wanted to come back for. He stared at it for a moment, then shook his head. He needed to get to the Akuma fight. He needed to get to the Akuma fight, but he looked up at the commissioned painting of his mother, a take on Gustave Klimit's A Lady in Gold. His father took her on a date in New York during Fashion Week there, and she fell in love with it at the museum, so he had this done for her when he proposed. He hated to admit it, but... He got his larger-than-life romantic pursuits from his father. Cat reached up to touch the canvas after stepping closer, but drew back when his fingers sank into it. That's not right. Paintings don't do that. At least, they're not supposed to. With his heart beating in his ears, Cat Noir ran his fingers across the canvas, Patches of the painting sunk like buttons. What? He looked down, searching for the scribble he'd done as a child with a blue marker, and couldn't find it. This wasn't the original, at least not the commissioned one. But buttons? And for what? Was there some kind of surround sound system in here father spoiled himself with for Friday nights or to intimidate business partners with? Sure, be comfy when you work from home, but that's kind of a flex. Were there other buttons? Forgetting the Akuma fight entirely, Cat Noir set down the framed photo and set to work studying the faux painting, finding button after button until he... Ugh! Cat Noir felt the floor jerk, barreling him downward so quickly it was a near miracle he didn't hit his head. It took a moment to focus, but when he did, he realized he was in the greenhouse. He was in his mother's greenhouse. His mother's greenhouse. Hadn't father sealed this off? It was once an observatory, then an in-home runway for streaming events, then a garden for the harsh winters and to plant veggies during their off-season. 
Cat couldn't continue his inner struggle because, as he looked around, his eyes first settled on butterflies, then at the man staring at him. His jaw so low, a little akuma could land inside and akumatize his tongue. Hawkmoth. Hawkmoth was here, in his mother's greenhouse runway observatory room. Hawkmoth. Here. And all Cat could do was stare, bum on the cold, hard floor with his jaw open. Ladybug. He had to tell Ladybug. Well, Hawkmoth began, straightening himself. Looks like a stray found his way in. I have a home, thank you very much, Cat spat back. What other kind of small talk could you have with your arch nemesis in the house you grew up in? Do you, Adrian? Cat froze, his thumb over the button to call Ladybug. What? He rasped. He didn't know if it was a whisper or a yell, but he could taste the fear in his voice before chills spasmed across his shoulder and dived into his stomach. As Hawkmoth walked toward him, his gait ever so familiar, it clicked. It clicked, and he wished it hadn't because it was worse than whatever 2 a.m. terror he'd dreamed of. It was just one man behind all of his angst. Just one man who he shared a face with, growing more into his look like every day as testified by his bathroom mirrors. The man who trapped the city and the man who trapped his freedom were the same. His throat was too dry to speak, and the shock cost him as Hawkmoth took advantage of his dropped guard and pushed him, sending him rolling across the floor, his head slamming into a metal railing post as he lost his grip on his baton. But he knew. He knew who this man was. Cat Noir stared up at him, eyes squinted as the lights blurred his face. Or maybe he'd hit his head too hard. He couldn't tell. He couldn't think straight. He needed to call Ladybug. Gabriel. With a sigh, Hawkmoth shook his head. Oh, Adrian. He straightened his posture, looking down at him. I really wish you hadn't said that. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 30 is on the way, and I'll catch you in the next one. If you're still listening, comment. Gabriel Agrest. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!